What's up guys, Rex here. In today's video, I'll be going over exactly how to apply to medical school using the American Medical College Application Service, or AMCAS. I'll be going to the actual AMCAS website and going over the application as if I was applying to medical school for fall of 2022. Real quick, a little bit about me. I am not applying to medical school this cycle. I am incredibly thankful for more success than I ever dreamed of having two cycles ago where I am now a medical student at Duke University and having the time of my life. And I want as many people to also have all the success or more that I had. And so I'm sharing all of that information that I can on this channel. So if you wanna check out more of my videos, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. I also have a playlist linked in the description and at the end of the video that has much more videos about the application cycle and sharing some of the stuff I learned along the way. Also, I'll be using the chapters feature, so feel free to hop around to whatever section is most useful to you. So let's jump right into it. So to get to AMCAS, I always just Google AMCAS and it takes me to the right place. So first tip, here we go. So at the AMCAS website, you'll click here to sign in. I will automatically sign in since I'm already signed in. You don't need to see my login information, but we will go to just continue to the 2022 application cycle. So continue application. I've already sort of filled it out. On the left here, it'll have all of your basic information. I should have this blurred out because it has some personal information, but it's your AMCID, sex, date of birth, country of birth, email, birth state, birth city, all that kind of stuff. So you'll initially not see all of these completed when it's the first time you're filling this out. And so you'll just go ahead, start at the beginning and click identifying information. And so I already have all this filled out, but it's just your legal name, your preferred name you need to put there. And then if you have any alternative names, you can add them. If you have ID numbers, so most commonly you'll have a school assigned ID number. When I actually applied, I put in my school ID number for UNC. Then it's just basic information on your sex, your birth sex, current gender identity, and then all this stuff that's auto-filled. The first time you open up AMCAS, I believe you have to put in the demographic information and then it gets locked in. So this is all locked in for me the first time I filled it out. So I can go ahead and save and continue and it'll automatically take you to the next part of the application where you're following along on the left-hand side. You can also hop to specific sections like that. You can go back to sections with this button, just save it and then come back another time or save and continue as you're going through. So my high school, this isn't actually where I attended high school, but I pretend that I went to school in Durham, North Carolina, because I'm at Duke. I'm in Durham now. That's, everybody knows that. Uh, apparently Jordan High School is a high school, all that kind of stuff. We'll put in some colleges. You have to check these boxes saying you understand that you must include basically any school you attended and then also other information about military education. And so I attended UNC Chapel Hill. So when you actually go to put this in, you would hit add and then you would have put in the country, state, school. This will all give you a list. Once you put in state, they'll actually pre-fill the list. And so you can just search from that. Chapel Hill undergrad, I started in August, ended in May. I didn't do any of those programs. I would recommend to authorize AMCAS to release your information to the school designated advisor. You also have to check, yes, any of these schools, as far as I know, you are going to have to have an official transcript sent to AMCAS. So AMCAS will need one. In addition to that, you'll have to add what degree you earned. And so it looks just like this, fill out Bachelor of Science when you are gonna get the degree. You have to add a major. I am biomedical engineering, but UNC is annoying and they actually title it biomedical and health sciences engineering was my major. I had a minor, you can go ahead and search for it. If it's wrong, you can edit it. And then yes, you understand that schools must send the transcripts for all the schools you attend. So I have my transcript there, transcript ID, all that kind of stuff. If you previously matriculated, you have to acknowledge that. And I'm pretending I'm applying for the first time, so I'm hitting no. And then if you had any institutional action, you have to acknowledge that I'm saying no, because I didn't. And then we can hit save and continue. It saves it, moves on. And so we have a lot of biographic information that you have to fill out. And so this takes a good amount of time. So just realize that when you're planning things and actually applying to medical school. So preferred address, 123 Main Street, Durham, North Carolina. That's the zip code of Duke. Phone number, 12345678. This is obviously not real. And my permanent address is also 1234 Main Street, all that kind of stuff. You can add an alternate contact information if you want to, not required. Citizenship, you don't have to be a citizen of the United States, but do not lie if you aren't. Legal resident, you have to acknowledge what your state of legal residence is if you are a citizen in the United States. And you can self-identify as a race, this is optional. Broadly speaking, in my understanding, I would recommend everybody to fill this out honestly. So I am white and I click that. 
you have to add your languages. I speak English and I speak it natively and functionally and it was used always in my childhood home. So I am putting that. Childhood information, you have to put all this information in. You can decline to answer to most of it. I broadly speaking would not recommend to decline to answer. I think it's usually in your best interest to be truthful and it can just look weird if you're declining to answer. For the purpose of filling this out, I am lying and saying decline to answer, decline to answer, decline to answer, don't know, all that kind of stuff. But fill this out truthfully, honestly, ask your parents if you don't know what your income level was, just be truthful with that, whatever it is. And similarly, be honest about how your school was paid for. I just divvied this up equally between all of them because that is not my actual case, but I don't feel like sharing that. So fill that out, honestly, take the time to calculate it, figure it out. Military service, you have to answer this truthfully. Honestly, I would not recommend hitting decline to answer. I would answer it truthfully. Military discharge, you have to answer that truthfully. Have to answer if you've had a felony. Have to answer if you had a misdemeanor. Have to acknowledge your disadvantaged status, yes or no. Definitely click on that link and understand what that means because that might mean different things to different people. This has the definition there. Parents and guardians, I click the button to indicate I am unable to provide that information. That's not true. I would recommend providing that information if you are able. Add siblings, add dependents, and we can continue. All right, so now coursework. This is something that takes a ton of time and you have to be pretty thorough and it's annoying and frustrating, but a big part of what AMCAS is doing when they're verifying your application is they are verifying your coursework matches all of your transcript information. And that takes a long time, so just be ready. Um, here's an example of how it's done. So I would do what academic year, I'm just pretending it's spring of 2021, pretending I'm a senior then, bio 101, biology, make sure you match the the actual classification of the course and so understand what these are. And these are also important because this is partially how AMCAS calculates your like biology, chemistry, physics, math. I think that's what their like science GPA is they have. And so make sure you understand that this does have significance if you're putting it as communications or chemistry, make sure they're accurate. Have your credit hours, transcript grade, lecture or lab only, have all that stuff. There's all kinds of different special cases that you will have. I imagine with the pandemic, many of you will be clicking pass fail. Many of you won't. We'll see, make sure you're using that. Use the AMCAS applicant guide. This is all very helpful information and it links you basically right to the page you need to know. And so I'll just hit save. Now. I would have like 200 freaking courses. I don't know how many, but you'd have a lot of these. It would take a lot more time than I'm taking right here. So we can just add one to save and continue. And then we have our work and activity section. I have a video talking all about work and activity section. I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. But for this, I am just saying, all right, I shadowed, did some shadowing, have your start date, end date, total hours, if it's a repeated experience or not. Basically, if I were to shadow the same doctor many different times, a couple months apart, I would do repeated experience and make sure you include your organization. I went to the doctor place and then it was in Durham and Dr. Doctor was very helpful to me and John Doe let me shadow them and his email is doctor at doctor and then you give your description and you have only 700 characters. I shadowed very goodly and so then this was my most meaningful because it's the only one I'm putting in here and you have only 1,325 extra characters when you click the most meaningful that that buys you. So you only can do most meaningful for a total of three of your work and activities. And then you have a total of 15 that you can do. So you can do 12 regulars and then three that you get this extra 1325 characters. This was all the meanings. And so it was my most meaningful. So there it says up to 15 entries. So we can save and continue. And your next section is the letters of eval and recommendation. I also have put out a video on all my thoughts for letters of eval. Also, we'll link that down below. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested. But importantly, when you actually go to add one of these, so you can add a letter of recommendation and it will depend on what school. If you have a school that has a committee letter, you would do a committee letter. If you have a letter packet at your school, have a letter packet. Make sure you talk to like your pre-health advisor or your academic advisor to know what your school does. If you have those, definitely that's what you wanna be providing. UNC, it's known as a pre-med school, doesn't have a pre-health committee, so I just did individual letters. Make sure you title the letter, all that kind of stuff. And so I'll just pretend that I did a committee letter. You would title it, I titled it, have the school, it had dropped down, that's my only option. Have all the information for the contact author, all of that stuff, address, phone number, email. And then once you do that, you can 
print a letter request form. So you would click on letter request form. And so I'll click on that and it automatically downloads, it opens it up. And then this is what you can send to the person that is actually sending the letter or the committee letter or the packet off to AMCAS and it gives them instructions of how to do that. It's very clear how to submit it and explains to them. And so you just need to do that, but also give them verbal instructions as well. But I talked about that in a different video. So let us eval, save and continue. Now you add the different medical schools. And so I'm pretending that I am applying to Duke University. You can go ahead and link to the MSAR profile. Now I have not paid for MSAR, so I do not get to see all of this extra information. Broadly speaking, I would recommend MSAR and the sort of do as I say, not as I do. I never paid for MSAR, but it's got all kinds of useful information there. Make sure you select the correct program that you are applying to. Funny story, I actually applied to Johns Hopkins incorrectly where I meant to do MD MBA and I only did MD. They were able to change that after the fact. I was able to email Johns Hopkins and get that changed. It all worked out just fine, but do check that you are applying to the correct program. Very helpful. Big difference between if you're doing MD, PhD, or just doing a regular MD. So double check that. You have to acknowledge if you applied previously and then you select which letters go to which school. So that's noteworthy that if you get 10 different letters of recommendation, schools have specific requirements of what letters they allow and require. And so you have to actually go check on that school specific website and make sure you are only selecting letters that fit their requirements and fit the rules for applying to that school. So for me, if you only have a committee letter, most schools, you just send them the committee letter and that's good. Okay, and so also here, it already is showing me my balance due. And so I'll go make a video eventually talking about how much it costs to apply to medical school, but that number will keep climbing up very quickly. So we'll save and continue. And so now this is where you actually can write your personal statement. You have 5,300 characters. You should not just write, please let me in. I have another video talking about how to write a personal statement. I also have a video sharing my own personal statement. Both of those will be linked down below. And then we can save and continue. And the last thing is your MCAT score. Your MCAT is already linked to your account for the vast majority of people because you have to have an AAMC account to sign up for the MCAT and all that stuff. So it's already linked. I have videos talking about the MCAT. I feel like I'm linking a lot of videos and just advertising myself at this point, but I'll probably link them down below too if you want to check those out. But yeah, I got a 522. Very thankful for that. Can't believe it still. Um, if you are planning to take subsequent MCATs, so this is saying, do you have any upcoming or recently taken MCAT exam dates where official MCAT scores have yet to be released? Make sure you check that yes or no so schools know. If you have other tests, you can add them in like a GRE. You absolutely do not need to do those. I did not have any subsequent tests, so I indicated I don't have any, and so then save there. And so that's it, you're done. And so from there, when it, it comes around that you can actually start submitting in end of May, early June, I think it's May 31st for this year, when you can actually start submitting, it might have like a save slash submit button, but in any case, you can go back to the main menu and you can view your application status. There'll probably be a big, huge submit application button right here. And so that's when you'll actually click on it and submit it. You can submit before your transcripts are received and your letters of evaluation are received, but the school needs those to actually get sent to the schools. And so that could be your last piece of the puzzle schools are waiting on to really look at their application. But that's how you actually apply to medical school. Kind of annoyingly long, there's a lot that goes into it and there's a lot more that goes into actually writing the personal statement and writing the work and activity section and infinitely more that goes into all of the work it takes to get the grades needed, study for the MCAT, take the MCAT, do all the volunteering, shadowing, research, whatever it is to actually have stuff to write about for your personal statement and work activity section. It is such a long haul and I commend anybody that is going through it you can do it. I was able to go through it. It's something that, yeah, it does suck at a lot of points in it. It's a very fulfilling journey. It's a fun journey, stressful journey. But now that I'm like through it, I look back at it sort of fondly, never would want to go through it again. But since it worked out really well and it can work out really well, trust that can work out really well, it'll be worth it. So let me know if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. I'd love to help in any way I can. Also consider emailing me if you have any specific questions that you'd like to ask me. If you want to catch more of my videos as they come out, make sure you subscribe, hit the notification bell. As always, like the video if you like the video, dislike the video if you dislike the video, and until next time, don't be ordinary.
it'll be great. Mm-hmm.